really closed the gap in the games. And honestly, would have loved to have another week with them to, to have to decide. But uh, you got to definitely list it one way since, um, you know, the third one only comes in case of emergency. Um, Brandon has a little more similarities to Brock and stuff, which I think made us lean that way. But it wasn't anything against Josh. Um, it, was, it was really a tough decision, and we just had to make one. All right, guys. Um, injuries uh, for Monday. Uh, E-Tour will be out. D-Winners will be out. Huff is um, doubtful. Aaron Banks questionable. Christian questionable. Go ahead. That mean like questionable, a game time decision questionable for Christian or? Just questionable. Corresponding move for Trent Williams yet? Uh, no, we haven't. How did, how did Trent get through the week and just what do you expect in terms of like his workflow? I thought he did good. It was nice to get the extra practice on um, Monday, but I think it was Tuesday to the rest of the world. Um, then he's had these three days. Um, each day he's gotten more comfortable. He was obviously in shape and stuff, but it was good just to get back into hearing the cadence coming off the ball, moving with other guys, and got better at form each day. You expect him to just be able to play the whole game like he normally would? Um, we'll see. I'd like him to, but it's um, you gotta you gotta watch it. We gotta talk to him. It's always I haven't done this too much with a tackle. You know, those are a little old linemen are different with rotating and stuff like skill positions and everything, but. Uh, also, it seems weird to just watch Trent sitting on the sideline next to us. Um, but that's something we'll be on top of throughout the game. And he'll be honest with us and how he feels. And I know Chris will be watching that a ton. Um, Brandon's workload, do you think he could, how much do you think he'll play? Uh, don't know yet. Um, you know, he's, you know, I think he plays most of the game usually. And probably be surprised with that same amount. But uh, he's in good shape. He's had a really good week. Uh, his soreness hasn't been too big after each practice. He's pushed it real hard, do some stuff extra after, and um, he looks good and he's ready to go. As far as Christian is uh, concerned, he pulled his calf week 17 in, in Washington. Is this injury related to that one? Um, I don't know if they're related, but I think it's similar. Yeah. You were uh, asked in the training camp about the kickoff rule and you know, I think Larry suggested that you could actually kick the ball into the end zone and you know, you uh, feigned surprise at that notion. Are you surprised at all at, through the first two games of how the kickoff return hasn't been a factor? Uh, not really. I think um, I think we were kind of expecting that, just I think like you guys were too, and it's, it's looked that way so far, and probably be surprised if it changed. Uh, what do you think of the, the Jets' corners? They don't travel their corners. Does it make it easier as a play caller when you know what side they're going to be on? Um, it would if... If one of them was wasn't very good, uh, but they're both really good players. They got a real good nickel, um, so it's it's not much of a difference. What Robert Sala is doing schematically is it pretty similar to what he's doing here? Is it evolved at all? Um, I mean, everyone evolves a little bit, but um, you know, it's very similar and similar, very similar foundation and it's real, really the same front, same coverages. So um, it's pretty much the same. Did Brock, uh, Brock and Ba kind of try to really? Talk. Rebuild their chemistry this week. Uh, well, him and Brandon Allen have been around each other all camp. Uh, we call him BA also a lot too. So uh, they've been great. I mean, um, you know, they started throwing together. Saturday was the first time they came up here alone and just did it. And they've had, uh, I think they did it Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and today. So um, they haven't missed a beat. You know, he'll get back in the flow of things, you know, so I'm putting a lot on a guy just to expect him to be exact same way. But he does look that way in practice and um, he'll get better each week. How did Talanoa kind of get through the week? Is it, is it just too soon for him to, to get back in there? Um, I don't think it's necessarily too soon. Um, I, I think he's looked great. You know, so we're just trying to be the safe as we can be with them, be smart with them. You know, we haven't ruled them out, you know, just in case of an emergency or anything, um, which means that if we needed, if he needed to, uh, he would be available. Um, but we're just trying to play it smart with him. What went into your backup quarterback decision? Um, you got to make a decision. Uh, I thought it was, it was as hard of any. Usually I don't want to have to make it. Usually I want it to be that obvious and just let it play out. Um, but it was... You know, Brandon had the head start just being here and stuff. Um, thought he did some better things in practice. I thought Josh really closed the gap in the games. And honestly, would have loved to have another week with him to, to have to decide. But uh, you got to definitely list it one way since, um, you know, the third one only comes in case of emergency. Um, Brandon has a little more similarities to Brock and stuff, which I think made us lean that way. But it wasn't anything against Josh. 
Um, it, was, it was really a tough decision, and we just had to make one. You said you had to get it for now. I mean, I guess everything is kind of for now. Nothing's in stone, but I mean, could Josh you know, play his way into the number two? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you always want to say, no, he can't. It's, you know, it's not like I'm going to have him compete too hard on scout team and things like that. Uh, you hope it's something that we never have to find out. Um, but Brandon would get the first shot. And but I think when you when you say it that way and what I've made clear with those guys is it's not set in stone. Um, it was what I'm saying is exactly how it was. And when it's that neck and neck and you got to pick a two, and if the one goes down, then you're going with the next guy. But that other guy has a chance to pass him. I'm going to say have Josh around if they, uh, you know, on weeks when you're playing a quarterback that can really get out and move. Uh, I think that helps a ton. Like that's you know, Josh does have a different asset than the other two guys. I mean, they, you know, Brandon and um, and Brock both can make plays with their legs, but uh, Josh, Josh does it at a higher level, um, which helps us for the scout team on certain weeks and definitely adds an element to our offense um, with a spark and things like that, and some different game plan stuff that, if uh, he ever did get a shot, it would bring a different element. Uh, Stewart said, sorry. Okay, please. We can go two more. Forster said yesterday talking about Pooney like and just how quickly he well I guess just his understanding of football and how immediate it was clear that he knew what he was doing he compared he mentioned Ward Dunn and Trump Williams kind of good company um, I guess if you kind of agree with that notion how does that show itself like, um, I think it shows yourself when you get thrown in there right away because of injuries that I think a lot of guys not a lot but you, just because you have success the first couple of days doesn't mean it's going to stick. Kind of the more defense that goes in, the more offense. Um, you, that's why coaches say a lot, you don't want to crown a guy too early because they can look great in the first couple of days. And once more situations come in, they get a little bit overwhelmed and, and they have to settle down a little bit. That's why I always like OTAs for O-linemen because O-linemen in the old OTAs when we used to practice football fully, um, they would really struggle and then they'd get away for 40 days and they'd come back and you go through the exact same stuff and you could it would stick a little bit more um, when he got in he looked really good at first and didn't look overwhelmed and you're just kind of waiting for it to happen and it never did happen on uh, the practice has stayed that way and then it carried over to the preseason game so he's been very consistent so far but this is the first real game coming up and we got a lot of confidence in him and i don't see why anything would change Without revealing your opening script what, what was it like Getting doing this game plan, knowing that you're going against Sala, and just kind of bouncing that through your head of anticipating what he's anticipating, what you're anticipating. Not not as much as usual. Sala's very sound in what he does. He's not going to overthink it, so I'm not going to overthink it. Um, I just hope um, our stadium people don't let him run the stairs, we won't let him get any workout in, and hopefully that'll rattle him a little bit. But it's. Um, you know, I know Brick so well too. You know, Brick's a great coach and a good friend also that I have a history with. So got a lot of guys on their staff that I've had a history with, friends too, um, which has a different element, just makes it more fun to talk to each other after and before a little bit, but I don't see really much relevance once the game starts. It seems like a lot of your play calling is predicated on what you expect the defense, what defensive call you expect from them. So the fact that you know Robert so well and he knows you so well, does that, like the, that whole, you know, I know that you know, that you know thing, how yeah. do you, how do you guess along with somebody you know so well? Um, I think that's the, that's why I like solid scheme. That's why I like our scheme. There, there's not a lot of guessing to it. It's, it's, it's a very sound scheme that there's not a, a lot of holes in it. You know, when, when you have to get, and if you have good players and you have a scheme that doesn't have a lot of holes, it's, it's tough to expose it on offense. When you don't have very good players and you have a sound scheme, you it's hard to stop people. So eventually you got to take risk. You got to do more things that make you vulnerable on defense that also are a problem for an offense, but it gives them a chance for big plays. And that's why I've always liked this type of scheme because it's harder to go against because they aren't as vulnerable because they don't, um, they aren't as risky. That doesn't mean that they're scared to do it or by any means, just like us. But the goal is you don't want to have to be reckless on defense and give the offense a lot of opportunities for easy gashes. Um, make them work for everything. And then you can coach fundamentals. You can coach coming off the ball as a D-line. You can coach running and hitting, tackling, and um, make offenses work for every little thing they do. When you feel you don't have that type of scheme or you don't have the players to run that scheme, 
you got to get over aggressive as a play caller. You got to time it out perfectly. And there's a lot of risk, but there are also is reward. And that's when the call is affected a lot. Um, when it's like this, you try to keep it as simple as possible and um, take care of the football and, and hope that the better football players take over. Thanks, guys.